Cats are one of the most popular pets on the planet, many of which are abandoned or homeless. But what is a feral cat? They aren't any ordinary domestic cat. With their finely tuned coordination, killer claws and sharp senses, feral cats are perfectly suited for stalking and capturing prey. These traits have allowed them to invade almost every corner of the continent and adapt to some of Australia's harshest conditions. Between 8 and 20 million feral cats in Australia, that's the estimate. So, and in the past 200 years, something like 22 mammal species have gone extinct in Australia. And one of the main drivers for that is cat and fox predation. So, a huge problem. They have no problem coping with the lack of water in this sort of area. Uh, they're nocturnal hunters, uh, they're very silent. I mean, anyone who has a cat in the back garden in any suburb will know that they're very good at hunting birds, and so, yeah, we are worried. The Australian government devised a plan to reduce the population of feral cats in Australia in an attempt to save and improve the living of up to 90 different plants, mammals and birds, all native to their areas. There are multiple ways to tackle the feral cat problems. There is discussions on the controversy between whether feral cats are the real issue or are we just shifting the blame away from the irresponsibility of pet owners? And should feral cats be killed or sterilised? But what is the issue with feral cats anyway? Feral cats are destroying whole ecosystems as they consume the native animals which are living in symbiosis with the plants around them. We know this because scientists have examined the stomach contents of captured or deceased cats. In Australia, feral cats do not have any native predators. A feral cat's main food source are small mammals, reptiles, birds, and most common, the European rabbit. Rabbits being in such vast numbers, the feral cats have a sustainable food source and in turn keep the cats alive and able to support large populations. The Federal Environmental Minister, Greg Hunt, unveiled a five-year strategy promising to reverse the extinction epidemic which has $6.6 .6 million dedicated, majority focusing on cat eradication. In Tasmania, there is one animal that until recently kept feral cats at bay. <laughs> Breeding programs have fought to save Tasmanian devils, whose numbers have been depleted by the spread of communicable facial cancer. We know from experience and from anecdotal experience where uh, Tasmanian devils will find kittens when the mother dens them and will destroy the kittens. Now there are proposals to reintroduce Tasmanian devils in controlled areas across Australia. I don't expect that devils would eradicate cats, um, but they might limit, they might kick the lid on them and they might reduce their impact. Should cats be killed or sterilised? Killing the cats has been the best and most effective approach that it will reduce the amount of cats roaming and killing native animals. There are three types of methods. Poisoning, which involves planting chunks of meat which contain poison. However, this method is flawed as other animals can consume the poison. Capture and kill, in which feral cats are captured in a cage and then killed, which is a much better approach as no native animals will be harmed in the process as they can be released unharmed. Shooting. Shooting is the most popular form of eradication and often a sport in rural areas. However effective, it is very hard to kill all the feral cats in an area, let alone a country, because they are primarily nocturnal hunters and can be very hard to spot during the day. They will often take shelter in anything from a hollowed out tree to an abandoned building. Then there is sterilization of feral cats which involves capturing and disabling their reproductive systems. The organisation, the Cats Alliance to Sterilise Incorporated, states that the sex and return policy is a more effective strategy than killing them, and demonstrates that 9 to 22% of US households feed wild cats. So it's not surprising that when lethal methods are used to remove feral cats, public sympathy is invariably in favour of the cats. Possible native animals under threat due to feral cats include the purple crowned lorikeet, which has been in deep decline in the southeastern parts of Australia. Commonly known as the rainbow bee eater, it has been disappearing from the southeastern coasts of Australia. 
they have been seen less and less since mid-2001, and the number of observations only peak during mating seasons. The Australian Magpie It may not look like it, but the Australian Magpie has been in a decline on the eastern coast since 1999. Scientists are still not entirely sure as to what is causing such a decline with the Magpie. Some of the possibilities are changes in climate, feral cats, and habitat destruction. And the Kangaroo Island Donut is under threat due to the introduction of feral cats. But action has been taken and a recovery plan was applied in 2011 to remove all cats on Kangaroo Island. The Kangaroo Island Donut has been classified as endangered since the 1990s. In my opinion, cats need to be kept indoors overnight to avoid cats killing small mammals like possums in urban areas. And neutering needs to be compulsory for all cat owners unless a certified breeder. Mainly as a precaution that if the cat is lost and becomes feral, it won't be able to reproduce. Guess cats are not all to blame for the problems that native animals are facing. Because they are just trying to survive, but we are the ones who put them in Australia. So are we to blame?